Hello everyone. Uh, this time around, I want to talk a little bit about self-driving cars. Now this is brought up by uh, a, a, a video I watched uh, recently about problems with self-driving cars and what requirements we should have to have them on the road. Generally, I don't have any particular problem with most of the requirements. So obviously the self-driving cars would have to obey the rules of the road. They would have to, uh, well, be able to avoid obstacles, do something sensible uh, when uh, the road surface is bad, uh, things like that. If they get thoroughly confused, they need to do the safe thing, like pull off the road and stop uh, if, they, if they can find the off the road. Now, having been in some of these situations myself where, for instance, the road is bad and you can't tell where the road actually is, uh, some of this stuff is hard. Uh, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see a self-driving car, especially early generations of them, uh, not be able to figure out what to do when they come across a track across a field. If you're driving along a nice, well-maintained, say, gravel road, then you hit a stretch that isn't well-maintained and it's overgrown and you've just got tire tracks through grass on the gravel. It's not necessarily clear where the road actually is, and, and that's, that's a hard problem. Now, of course, self-driving cars are not going to be driving around on the gravel back roads, at least in the early generations. Uh, they're going to be sticking to better maintained areas or theoretically better maintained areas like cities and so on, which theoretically have good road surfaces and proper road markings and so on. The odds are, though, if your city has lots of areas where the roads and lane markings and everything are simply not maintained and then that's obviously an issue. Uh, but that's an issue all drivers have to deal with. Uh, so I don't have any particular issue with uh, requiring the self-driving cars to uh, obey the rules of the road. Every driver should be obeying the rules of the road. There, there should be no exceptions. You should always be obeying the rules of the road. That does raise uh, an interesting problem in that the rules of the road do actually vary from place to place, and it's not immediately obvious how they vary, and the self-driving car itself is not going to be able to read notice signs and understand them. Uh, in order for that to happen, we're going to have to get natural language processing working perfectly, and that is not going to happen anytime soon unless there's a massive massive breakthrough and you when you consider natural language processing involves a fairly large chunk of the human brain so it's clearly a hard problem and because we we can do it it seems easy to us we think it should be easy for the machines but it's not uh, remembering that we have the equivalent of a massive pile of specialized hardware for dealing with it. It's the same thing. We have a massive pile of the equivalent of specialized hardware for dealing with visual cues. And we have a whole bunch of specialized hardware for dealing with spatial uh, awareness, uh, where we are in relation to other things. We have a mental model of the world around us, uh, which allows us to uh, take shortcuts in things like vision and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. It allows us to make approximations. And those approximations are actually pretty good. Now, the other thing is we're making these approximations continually, and as more information comes in, we improve our model of what's going on around us. So that's why we can recognize that something looks like a dog coming up, uh, off from the side. And it may not be a dog, but it looks like one in, in, in the first glance. 
And then as it comes further into view, we have a little better information about it. We might see that it's actually uh, a moose or something off in a field, or it's a odd shaped tree that's just coming into view, uh, in, into the field of view uh, over a hill or something like that. There's a lot of things that can fool us, but because we're continually updating our mental notion of what we're seeing, we can get away with that. We can get away with those shortcuts which make the processing easier. Now, the self-driving cars don't have this mass of specialized hardware that we have. And that means that uh, we need to, when we're building these things, teach them the same type of perceptions that we use. Uh, we need to teach them how to perceive the world in a way that allows them to interact with it in the way that we want them to. In this case, driving a car safely. So, self-driving cars are a hard problem. And the first generations of them are not going to be completely autonomous. Uh, if you're going to drive through city traffic, maybe they'll be able to handle that just fine. And a lot of country roads may be, be able to handle that just fine, but uh, your highways at least. But once you get onto the back roads and the back and beyond, you're probably going to have to drive manually just because there's going to be too much stuff that is randomly different than what the... Uh, the brain of the self-driving car is going to, uh, going to understand. So when you come, uh, come along with uh, someone like Google insisting that uh, their self-driving car should not have a steering wheel or any way necessarily for the human passengers to take control of the car, that's probably short-sighted. Uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll get there. I'm pretty sure we'll get there in enough years. But I'm not convinced that it'll happen even in this century. I'm not convinced I will live to see it. I would be thrilled to see it because if the, the vast majority of the cars on the road were self-driving, there would be an immense reduction in motor vehicle accidents due to driver error. Uh, it won't reduce the accidents due to faulty equipment or poorly maintained equipment, uh, you know, things like that. But it'll reduce crashes due to fatigue, uh, the driver being lost and not paying attention, uh, being on, the, on your cell phone talking instead of driving. Uh, and by the way, hands-free is just as distracting as holding the thing. Don't do either. No matter what the local laws say, it's distracting. Don't do it. Okay, so there's all of this stuff about them that's hard, but smart people are working on it, and we will solve it eventually. Now, there's a couple of things that I, I've seen in some of these... Uh, these videos and articles and so on on self-driving cars that leave me scratching my head. The big one is that people seem to be expecting a self-driving car to make perfect moral decisions while it's driving. And pardon my language, that's fucking ridiculous. Here's why. Morality is not a constant. It's not. So don't, don't go thinking it is. You may think it is, but it's not. You cannot arbitrarily set up a bunch of rules that define morality. It cannot be done. And that's for a couple reasons. One, cultures vary. What's considered acceptable in one culture often is not in another. And what's not acceptable in, in the first one may be acceptable in the second one. And also, morality does depend on the specific context. 
and you can't program rules for every possible context. Now, the example that I've seen a couple of times now is the, uh, the, the, the car is going to have to make decisions like, do I protect my, my passenger and run into that uh, minivan with a family with three kids and kill them? Or do I dodge and wrap myself around a concrete post and kill my passenger? Well, that's a bloody stupid uh, situation to propose. It, it's stupid. And it should never be expected that an autonomous system makes a moral choice. The answer to this problem is crystal clear. The car I am riding in should be concerned about me and me alone if there's any conflict. It's my car. It's supposed to deal with my uh, life, my uh, transportation. Um, and what this this thought experiment uh, does is it proposes a stupid situation that the only way you can get into this situation if you are following the rules of the road is if the other vehicle is not. And that is why this is a stupid proposed situation. If you are following the rules of the road and somebody jumps out in front of you, you know, a car runs a stop sign and is in front of you, it doesn't matter if there's five kids in there or three kids or, or nobody. You do the best that you can to avoid killing yourself. People are selfish that way, and we should not require them to act differently. It is the responsibility of the other driver not to run that stop sign. It is the responsibility of that other driver to stay in his lane. It's the responsibility of that other driver to slow down if the conditions don't warrant going fast. It's the responsibility of the other driver to drive safely. It is also the responsi my responsibility to drive safely when I'm driving. It was therefore be the self-driving car's responsibility to drive safely while it's driving. As long as it is be behaving according to the rules of the road, Every other driver on the road must accept what that driver is doing. That is the only thing that you need for a self-driving car. It must obey the rules. If the rules have cases which are ambiguous, that's a problem with the rules. Now, there's going to be those cases, but there are there are sensible default things you can do and so on. Now, I hear it said quite a lot that sometimes you need to break the rules to be safe. Well, yes, that does happen. But in most cases, if you can come to a complete stop, that is almost always going to be the safest thing you can do, especially if you can get out of the way of other traffic. And that's a simple default fallback situation to, to use. Now, if you have conditions that prevent you from doing that, then you're looking for a way to dodge or something like that. But these are well-known things that you can do. And, and you're going to, when you're trying to dodge, you're going to be looking for the direction to dodge is going to cause you the least 
harm. In almost all cases, that's also going to cause everybody else the least harm because you want to get out of the way of whatever obstacle you're going to hit, but you want to do it in such a way that you don't get killed. Uh, so that means you're going to aim for that open space. Uh, you're going to, if there's a wall on the right and open space on the left, you're going to swerve left. If there's open space on both sides but oncoming traffic on the left, you swerve right. It's not rocket science, and it's pretty sure that the first generally available self-driving cars will be able to deal with those situations. But... No driver should be required to make a moral choice while driving. Moral choices have no business being required of drivers on the road. Not from a legal standpoint. We may expect it socially that a human being will choose their own death over the death of a, a bus full of children. I wouldn't count on it, though. Most of us actually wouldn't. In the heat of the moment, we're going to choose ourselves, most of us, unless we have some vested connection with the other parties. Now, this one video I just watched compared this situation, of in, on, in driving situation, to the idea of... You have a train coming along, and there's a, there's a uh, switch. If you do nothing, uh, five, or four people die because they're stuck on the track. You know, they're tied up by some villain. But you can switch the train so it goes down another track that only kills one person. Well, this is also a fucking stupid uh, uh, thought experiment. Um, but the, the idea is, what's the moral choice? Well, it depends. In the, and so what would you do? If I had no vested interest in either party... I think I would probably walk away. I wouldn't make a choice. And that sounds... I wouldn't make a choice to act. I'd make a choice to say, that's not my problem. There's no good solution. I'm not going to change what's going to happen. It's the bad guy's fault. Whoever tied them up and left them on the tracks. And I know that sounds callous. I know there's some of you that are screaming, you should change the switch so that the train kills one person instead of four. The problem with that reasoning, and if I was forced to actually make a decision, if I was forced to stay and, and choose a path for the train, I would send it down the track with the one person if I had no other information. But if I'm not forced to make that choice, not forced to actively choose, if I can just walk away, I'm almost certainly going to walk away. Because if I do that, I can convince myself that it's not my fault. But as soon as I take an active part, now I have direct culpability. Now, if you put a gun to my head and force me to make a choice, I will probably switch the train. Now, this whole um, analysis changes if I know something about these people. If I have to make the choice between saving that one guy or the four on the other track, and that one guy is my best friend in the world, I'm probably going to save him. On the other hand, if he's my worst enemy, I'm probably going to have no problem 
killing him in that situation if I have to make the choice. Or I'm going to have a lot less trouble. And the same goes if there's my best friend is in the group of four, I'm probably going to route the train to the single guy. If my now that where it gets interesting, if my worst enemy is in that group of that that group, that gets complicated because it'll depend what I know about the rest of the people in the group, and and and, there, and it, I might not even make the same choice in two circumstances that look the same. So basically. What's being proposed is an unsolvable problem, a choice between two untenable solutions. If I could, I would choose the third path, derail the train. But what if it's a, not a freight train? What if it's a passenger train and it's got 500 people on it? You know, so derailing the train is not going to be a good choice. Or maybe derailing the train will kill 30 people, bystanders. Um, uh, what if, there's, you can what if this to death and, and that's why your self-driving car can never make these moral choices we can't make the bloody moral choices and here's the thing what are the odds such a bloody artificial situation is going to show up I've never had to make that decision in nearly 40 years. Never. I've never had to make a call like that in nearly 40 years. It's not impossible that it could come up, but what are the odds that I'm going to be the one that has that choice to make? So in almost all cases when you're driving you're not going to have to make a moral choice and expecting the driver of a car to make a moral choice in a situation that's dynamic sudden unexpected and with incomplete information is fucking ridiculous and if we can't make the obvious moral choice in those situations how the hell do we expect a computer system that we've designed to make the choice. We can't. And it's just stupid expecting an, an automaton to make that kind of a decision. So, who should the driver, in that case, protect? His passengers. If possible, everybody. Take the choice that causes the least harm for, for whatever definition of harm you have. But here's the thing, it's almost certainly going to be the same choice that you would make to save your own passengers. And here's the thing, the other thing on that, the automaton is going to be able to make that choice probably faster and probably better and probably execute it better than a human being would. So you're going to have even fewer cases where you have to make a snap decision and you do something and it then rolls your car and you take out three others. Because the automatic driving system is going to be able to much more precisely control the steering and the brakes and the acceleration and react much faster if control is lost. So we should be putting much more effort into giving these automatic systems perfect control rather than morality. Because we will have far safer roads if these automatic systems can control vehicles accurately. And as long as the rules of the road are not ridiculous, staying within them will actually generally be the safest path. Now, we also have 
a particular problem with self-driving cars when they have to share the road with faulty human behavior. And this is, in fact, a problem that is fairly hard to solve. Humans can't even share the road with faulty human behavior. So, uh, really, uh, it's, we shouldn't expect our machines to be able to do it perfectly either. However, the, the automatic driving systems will have to have obstacle avoidance capabilities because you can have any kind of an obstacle on the road that appears dynamically. Uh, so obviously we're going we're gonna to have that. And it can perceive these threats much further ahead of time because it can have much better vision than we have. It won't necessarily have to rely on visible light like we do. It can consider infrared, ultraviolet. It can consider... Um, it can consider something it's getting from, say, a sonar or a LIDAR or a radar type system. It, it can use any kind of sensor that gives useful information. It can have road surface sensors. It can have road temperature sensors. It can have air temperature sensors. And it can adjust its driving behavior based on that. It can adjust its driving behavior based on feedback from the traction system, and things like that. All these things that help human drivers can generally help the automatic system as well. Now, again, we have this SUV full of kids that uh, is uh, there, and I have a choice between hitting that and uh, smashing into a wall and smashing into the wall will kill me, smashing into the uh, van full of kids may kill me. And it may kill one or more of the kids. Well, that's a sudden obstacle. And, th and that's, this is where our choice, choice comes in. Well, your automatic system can calculate that the impact on the wall is going to have a certain characteristic acceleration to it and the impact on the uh, SUV will have a certain characteristic acceleration to it and so on and decide that hitting the SUV is safer for me. Yeah, I think I'd rather it did that even if it's going to kill the kids. I don't want to die, right? Now maybe I would choose to hit the wall in the heat of the moment. I don't know. In the heat of the moment, I'm not going to be able to necessarily process what's in that van. I'm not even necessarily going to process that it's a van coming at me. And odds are, the automatic system isn't going to have that information either. It's going to see an obstacle flying at it. It's going to see something in front of it it has to dodge. It's going to see obstacles, but it's not going to understand what it sees. And if we have trouble making that semantic connection in the heat of the moment, there's no way a machine that doesn't have a, a mental model is going to be able to do it. It takes us decades of experience to be able to do that sort of thing. And what autonomous driver is going to have that, right? It's, it's just not going to happen. So dealing with unpredictable human drivers doing stupid things well, that really falls mostly under dealing with unpredictable things that are going to happen when you're driving anyway. Tumbleweeds rolling across the road. Uh, uh, a, uh, an obstacle that's sitting there. A, a log across the road. Things like that that you need to not hit. Uh, obviously, we need to solve that problem and do it in a way that doesn't cause sudden unexpected movements by the uh, automatic driver because other automatic drivers aren't going to be able to deal with sudden unexpected movements for no reason either because uh, they still have to process it and deal with it too. So we, you know, we need to you know, make that sensible. Uh, and we, of course, have to deal with di a dynamic situation. Uh, 
you know, and that dynamic situation could be nothing more than just the weather, right? Uh, how many people do stupid things when the weather changes? So uh, we want to uh, we want to keep these uh, autonomous vehicles doing sensible things in these circumstances. Now, I firmly believe that once we get the basic kinks worked out and we have these things driving around on public roads with real drivers driving around them, we will find out that they are, on average, safer because they're not going to get bored, they're not going to get impatient. They will wait until it's safe to proceed at a stop sign. They will actually stop at a stop sign. Uh, they will obey speed limits uh, and the current crop that are limited to say 30 miles an hour are not going to be the sort that end up let out on the road in general, the general models. So the uh, actual consumer level models are going to be able to travel at the speed limit. Uh, people aren't going to buy them otherwise, right? Uh, and you can't rely on detailed mapping of everything in the area to decide what the uh, vehicle should be doing. You can't d rely on mapping where all the signs are and the speed limits and everything are uh, because that stuff's dynamic too. It has to be able to deal with, uh, with that sort of thing. Uh, so you just have to make it be able to read road signs. And since they're a standard format, they're actually not difficult to read automatically. You can even... Uh, teach the, uh, the, uh, the automatic driver how to follow directions to a city based on road signs, and that will come eventually, I think. And none of this requires a, necessarily a mental model of the world. It doesn't necessarily require actual intelligence. It doesn't necessarily require sentience. So, basically, uh, the idea that a self-driving car has to be perfect at driving. Completely perfect in all circumstances, known, unknown, foreseeable, unforeseeable. That's ludicrous. We don't require that of human drivers. We should not be requiring that of mechanical drivers. We should require a certain minimum level of competence, uh, that the uh, mechanical driver should be able to pass a reasonable driving test. Uh, we should require that it be able to demonstrate the same skills that re we require of human drivers. And we should be able to demonstrate that it does at least as well as human beings in accident avoidance. Note I said at least as well. I didn't say better. See, here's the thing. The perfect is the enemy of the good enough. Perfect is the enemy of better. As long as you aren't going to allow something because it's not perfect, you're, you're going to stop progress altogether. So we need to get out of this mindset that mechanical things have to be perfect at executing their task. They just have to be better than humans enough that the investment in using them is worth making. So even if that self-driving car is 5% better at accident avoidance and stays within the rules of the road 99% of the time instead of say 95% of the time for human drivers and I'm pretty sure human drivers are down around 30% of the time there as long as it's behaving sensibly according to the rules then we shouldn't be banning it from the road. Now, there are some liability problems. Uh, who's liable 
if the uh, smarts of the uh, automatic driver goes haywire. Uh, and that is a problem that we will need to solve because in this case, you can't hold the owner of, the, of it liable for a fault in the design. The owner has no possible way of even assessing that. But we already have processes in place for that sort of thing. Uh, that's what recalls are for when safety faults are found with regular human-operated automobiles. So, really, we do already have the required legal framework there. We just have to uh, take our heads out of our asses and just say, yeah, a fault in the control system, the automatic driver, is the, the manufacturer's problem. That the liability shifts there because in this case, the manufacturer is controlling the car indirectly because their control system is operating it. It's just like if you had a, uh, a, a regular car and uh, there was a fault in the steering column which would cause the steering wheel to disconnect from the wheels. Well, that's not your fault if you hit something because the steering system failed due to a design flaw or a manufacturing flaw. This is something you have no way of assessing. Uh, and even if you do have a way of assessing it, you're not an expert. You don't, you don't know the tolerances of the uh, materials in use. You don't even know what the materials are from simple inspection. And the same is going to be true for the software and special hardware that these autonomous uh, drivers are going to have. So obviously the, there's going to have to be, uh, it's going to be the same liability issue as if any other control system fails in a vehicle and causes trouble. So when things fail, there's going to have to be uh, recalls and things like that. Now, there, because this is going to be so critical to safe operation of these vehicles, there's probably going to have to be some other frameworks and regulations so that uh, uh, greedy corporations and stuff actually behave sanely. Uh, but realistically, we don't need a huge stack of new rules. We just need to require that these autonomous cars can actually operate safely on the public roads. And how do you do that for human drivers? A driving test. So give these things a driving test. And make sure they actually behave. Now, I think that's where a lot of jurisdictions are going with this. Demonstrate your vehicle actually obeys the rules and we'll let you run it on the road. Um... Uh, the other thing is you're going to have to convince people it's safe uh, or people aren't going to, most people aren't going to buy it. So it's going to be a while before we start getting a stack of self-driving cars on the road. Uh, and there might be a short period where there's more accidents because people aren't expecting other drivers to follow the rules. I know I've almost been rear-ended many times for not speeding. Uh, I've almost been T-boned because people weren't going to stop at stop signs, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of really, really bad drivers out there. So having a couple of less marginal autonomous cars out there, it's not going to make the roads any less safe. They're freaking dangerous already. So, uh, you know, let's, let's take our heads out of our asses and just Let's develop this stuff so it is safe, uh, so, so, it's, so it gets safer over time. So anyway, in summary, expecting a self-driving car to make perfect decisions in all circumstances all of the time is ludicrous. It's never, ever, 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 
ever going to be possible. And I think the people insisting on this that understand the situations, and that's most of the lobbying types, the companies and so on, they're doing that to further their own interests that would be harmed by having self-driving cars. Also, expecting moral decisions from a machine in a, a very dynamic situation is fucking stupid, as I put it. The machine cannot have perfect information any more than you or I can when we're driving. So expecting a moral choice it's ridiculous. Don't do that. Demanding that means we will never have a self-driving car. And on top of that, because the autonomous car does not have the mental models and the uh, experience and, and the ability to add a semantic meaning to the things it sees, it really can't make a moral decision. It's impossible until we crack proper artificial intelligence. And that comes with a boatload of its own problems. And you really, really, really don't want an actual, real, artificial intelligence making moral decisions on your behalf. You don't. It's better to have a dumb mechanical device that follows procedures that are known to be on average best in most circumstances than to have it try to make a moral decision. It has to understand morals before it can do that. And we as humans have enough trouble understanding morals that I don't think we'll ever get a machine that can understand morals in a way that we find acceptable. So don't require it. I'm sure don't stop any research that tries to do that, but don't require it because now you're, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's impossible. And I think a lot of the people that uh, are terrified of an amoral machine making decisions, uh, like killing that busload of kids instead of killing the driver or the passenger it's chauffeuring around, I think most of the people that are putting that out there They have a hidden agenda, a vested interest in driverless cars not happening. So they build straw men and throw them out there, which get parroted and parroted and parroted by various uh, pundits and people with audiences and so on. And they do that to stir up fear, uncertainty, and doubt about a new technology that's going to cause them pain. And, you know, we need to understand that this goes on. So, this um, morality thing, it's a red herring. It, it does nothing to do with driving. Driving is not a moral situation. Morality should have nothing to do with driving. Driving according to the rules of the road, yes. Morality, no. You cannot require morality from drivers. It, it's just not reasonable. The point of the rules of the road is to keep the vast majority of the drivers safe. Morality does not keep drivers safe. Amorality would actually be better because it takes ambiguity out of situations. You simply do what is in the rules. Rules that have been designed for most circumstances that are likely to come up. 
and you look out for yourself, the survival instinct. And that's it. If you combine those two, I think on average, you'll get your best result on average. There is always going to be some ridiculous tragedy. Doesn't matter what you do, some ridiculous tragedy is going to pop up. And that's because both people are stupid and nature doesn't give a fuck. So you're going to have natural disasters, weather, and circumstances that are untenable, and you're going to have stupid people doing stupid things. So you're always going to have these tragedies. So there you have it. That's my rant, and it has run a bit long here, on uh, the problems with the problems with driverless cars. Uh, but really, the big objections and big problems that need solving that I keep hearing about, they're way overblown and they'll never get solved unless we take our heads out of our collective asses and say, okay, let's get something that's approximate, that's as good as humans at controlling a car and then improve it from there. So get something at least as good as, as an average driver and then improve it from there. If your driverless car is at least as good as an average driver, it's not making the roads less safe. And we just need to understand that. So there you have it. Uh, that, I'm going to end that here because I think I'm going around in circles here. Uh, and that tends to happen with these things. So anyway, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. And remember to be notified of new videos and so on. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Um, and if you have suggestions for uh, future videos, uh, feel free to message me. And this is where I should insert an outro of some kind. Thanks for watching.